What's up, everybody? This is Tech G back with another video to help you successfully pass the CompTIA Tech Plus certification exam. So let's get into it. In this video, we're going to explore the world of databases and discuss the differences between structured, semi-structured, and non-structured databases. We'll also compare relational and non-relational databases, delving into the details of schema, tables, keys, and constraints for relational databases, as well as key value stores and document databases for non-relational databases. Now, understanding how different types of databases work is essential for managing, storing, and retrieving data efficiently in various computing environments. So with all that said, let's go ahead and get into the details. So to begin, let's define and compare the three main types of database structures. We're going to talk about structured, semi-structured, and non-structured databases. So let's begin with structured data. So structured data, this is the most organized form of data and it fits into predefined models, often with rows and columns like a spreadsheet or a relational database. And structured data follows a strict schema, meaning every data point fits a specific format, making it easy to query, manipulate, and analyze. And some examples will be customer records, sales data, financial data. All of these can be stored in tables with predefined fields like name, age, and address. And also structured data is often stored in relational databases such as MySQL, PostGRE SQL or Microsoft SQL Server. So in structured data, because every piece of data has a clear predefined model, tasks like querying or joining tables becomes highly efficient. Next, let's talk about semi-structured data. Semi-structured data falls between structured and non-structured data. It doesn't adhere to a strict table format, but it still has some organizational properties that make it easier to analyze than non-structured data. So semi-structured data may have tags or keys that define certain data elements, but the structure isn't rigid. So for example, some fields might exist in one record, but not in another. And some examples of semi-structured data are JSON and XML documents. In these formats, data can have varying attributes, but still maintain a certain level of organization. And this type of data is often stored in document databases like MongoDB or Couchbase. So semi-structured data is particularly useful for applications that require flexibility, such as web applications that handle dynamic content. All right, next let's talk about non-structured data. So non-structured data, on the other hand, doesn't have any predefined structure. This type of data is more challenging to analyze and store in a traditional relational database. So non-structured databases have no fixed schemas. So non-structured data is unorganized and can take any form and it doesn't fit neatly into rows or columns. And some examples include multimedia files like images, video and audio, social media posts and sensor data. Data, and non-structured data is typically stored in specialized databases or file storage systems like NoSQL databases, Hadoop, or even cloud-based systems like Amazon Web Services S3. So non-structured data has become increasingly important as businesses deal with vast amounts of multimedia, user-generated content, and data from sensors or IoT devices. All right, now that we understand the different types of data, let's move on to relational databases, which are a popular choice for storing structured data. So what is a relational database? So a relational database, this is the type of database that stores data in a structured format using rows and columns, and data is organized into tables, and the relationships between the tables are defined using keys. And the most common relational database management systems include MySQL, PostGR, SQL, Oracle Database, and Microsoft SQL Server. So relational databases excel in situations where data consistency and relationships between data points are critical. So let's explore some key concepts that define relational databases. All right, first we're gonna talk about what is called a schema. So a schema defines the structure of a relational database, specifying how data is organized into tables, fields, and relationships. It acts as a blueprint for the database, determining what data can be stored and how it can be accessed. So we have what is called a table, and this is the core of a relational database. Each table contains records or rows in fields or columns. And we have what are called constraints. These are rules that ensure the integrity of the data. So for example, a constraint may enforce that a particular field cannot be left blank or that a field must contain unique values. And schemas, they are important for maintaining data consistency and ensuring that all entries conform to the same rules. 
Next, we have tables, rows, and columns. So relational databases organize data into tables, which consist of rows, which are also known as records, and columns, which are also known as fields. And when it comes to rows, each row in a table represents a single record or entry. So for example, in a customer table, each row would represent a different customer. And then it also has columns. So each column represents a specific attribute of the data, such as a customer's name, address, or phone number. So this structure makes it easy to run complex queries and retrieve specific data efficiently. Next, we're going to talk about what is called the primary key and a foreign key. So two important types of keys in relational databases are the primary key and the foreign key. And the primary key, this is a unique identifier for each record in a table. It ensures that no two records in the table are identical. So for example, a customer ID might be the primary key in a customer table. Then we have what is called the foreign key. So a foreign key is a field in one table that links to the primary key in another table. Table. It creates a relationship between the two tables. So for instance, an order table might have a foreign key linking it to the customer table to identify who placed each order. So by linking tables through foreign keys, relational databases can efficiently manage relationships between data. Then we have what are called constraints and constraints in relational databases help ensure data integrity by imposing rules on the data. And common constraints include the following. You have what is called a not null. And this ensures that a column cannot have a null value. We have a constraint called unique. This ensures that all values in the column are unique. We have a check constraint. This ensures that all values in the column meet a specified condition. And then we have the foreign key. This enforces the link between tables. So constraints, they play a critical role in maintaining the accuracy and reliability of data in relational databases. All right, now let's switch gears and discuss non-relational databases, often referred to as NoSQL databases. And these databases are designed to handle different types of data, especially semi-structured or non-structured data. So what is a non-relational database? So unlike relational databases, non-relational databases do not rely on tables, rows, and columns. Instead, they use more flexible data models. And this flexibility makes them ideal for storing large volumes of unstructured or semi-structured data. And common non-relational database types include the following. You have what is called a key value database. And you have what is called a document database. So non-relational databases, they are highly scalable and they perform well in distributed systems. All right, so let's talk about the key value database. So a key value database is the simplest type of NoSQL database where data is stored as a collection of key value pairs. And a key, this is a unique identifier for the data. And the value, this is the data associated with the key that can be any type of information such as text, numbers, or binary objects. So key value databases are often used for storing session data, configuration settings, or user profiles. And popular key value databases include Redis and DynamoDB. Next, we have what is called a document database. So a document database, this stores data in the form of documents, typically in JSON or BSON, which stands for binary JSON format, and they offer flexible schemas. So unlike relational databases, document databases don't require a fixed schema, which makes them ideal for handling semi-structured data. They also offer nested documents. So documents can contain nested fields and arrays, allowing for more complex and hierarchical data structure and they offer query flexibility. So document databases allow for rich querying, making them powerful for applications that need to search and filter based on various fields. And two popular document databases include MongoDB and CouchDB. All right, so let's quickly compare relational and non-relational databases. So when it comes to relational databases, we're talking about structured data. So relational databases are ideal for storing structured data with predefined relationships. They are also what is called ACID compliance. And these databases are known for their ACID properties, and that stands for atomicity, consistency, isolation, durability, and all of that ensures data integrity. They're known for a fixed schema, so a strict 
metric schema is used, which may require careful planning and upfront design. In a typical use case, relational databases are used in situations where data consistency is critical, such as in financial systems or inventory management. Then we have what is called the non-relational database, and they offer flexible data models. So non-relational databases are better suited for handling semi-structured or non-structured data. They are schema-less, so they have no predefined schema, which allows for them to be more flexible in handling evolving data. They are very scalable, so non-relational databases are highly scalable, making them ideal for applications with large amounts of data or high traffic, such as social media platforms or content management systems. In a typical use case, non-relational databases, they excel in environments where the data structure is constantly changing or large-scale horizontal scalability is required. So in conclusion, we've explored the differences between structured, semi-structured, and non-structured data, as well as compared relational and non-relational databases. So once again, relational databases, they offer structured data with a fixed schema, keys, and constraints, making them ideal for applications that require data integrity and relationships between records. And then we have non-relational databases, and they offer more flexibility for handling semi-structured and non-structured data, making them perfect for modern applications that require scalability and flexibility. Now, understanding these database structures is essential for the CompTIA Tech Plus exam and for working effectively with different types of data in the real world world. Now, with all of that being said, let's do this check on learning. So which of the following best describes a structured database? Is it a database with loosely defined data and flexible schemas? Is it a database that organizes data into tables with rows and columns following a fixed schema? Is it a database that stores data in key value pairs? Or is it a database that focuses on storing unstructured data like images and videos? And the correct answer is, it is a database that organizes data into tables with rows and columns following a fixed schema. So structured databases, such as relational databases, they organize data into predefined tables consisting of rows and columns. And each column has a defined data type and a fixed schema determines how the data is organized. This contrasts with semi-structured and non-structured databases, which allow for more flexibility in data organization. Next question, in a relational database, what is the purpose of a foreign key? Is it to uniquely identify each record within a table? Is it to reference data in another table, creating a relationship between the two? Is it to restrict data from being duplicated in the same table? Or is it to store unstructured data such as images and documents? And the correct answer is, it is to reference data in another table, creating a relationship between the two. So a foreign key in a relational database creates a link between two tables by referencing the primary key of another table. This allows relational databases to maintain relationships between tables, ensuring data integrity across related tables. And our final question, which type of database is most appropriate for storing large amounts of unstructured data, such as videos or logs? Would it be a relational database, a document database, a flat file database, or a key value database? And the correct answer would be, this would be a document database. So document databases, which are a type of non-relational database, are well suited for handling unstructured or semi-structured data, such as videos, logs, and documents. They store data in formats like JSON and BSON, allowing for flexible schemas that can accommodate a variety of data types without the rigid structure required by relational databases.